What's up guys, Tony Hannity's here from LazyTechGuys.com and this is the OnePlus 2. I've had it for about three or four days now and I feel like I've come up with a pretty good list of things to consider before you go ahead and buy it. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so let's first talk about the actual hardware of the OnePlus 2. The OnePlus 2 has very, very good hardware. I would definitely consider it to be premium. It is what I consider to be a unibody display, meaning that it is just one piece. You don't have the ability to remove the battery, and thus there's less moving parts. The screen itself is a 5.5-inch LCD 1080p screen. Now, some of you out there might say, oh, 1080p? Why not 2K? Why not 4K? Or whatever you know, Quad HD is. The fact of the matter is, if you have that much output with the screen quality, you're going to need a little bit of a better battery. And we'll get to that in a little bit too. But even though it is 1080p, the quality of the screen is really on par for that resolution. Now, the screen itself is what OnePlus told me to be in a design called a floating screen. So if you look at the edge between the screen and the rest of the body, it looks like it's coming apart. There looks to be kind of a gap, but that's design. That is something that they wanted to have the, I guess, the illusion that it's floating off of the rest of the phone. So I don't know if dust can actually get in there. Um, I just went to the beach today with it, and I didn't. I don't see any dust in there or any sand or anything like that. So that's okay. That's a good thing. The other thing that they've improved on the hardware is that all the way around, this is metal. It's not brushed chrome on top of plastic. This is hardcore metal. So it does feel very solid, and also. On the back of the phone, this is the sandstone gray that comes with the phone, but then they have some of their swap cases where you can get bamboo wood, you can get other kinds of wood and other kinds of stone to customize it a little bit better. Now, if you want to go for those, I believe they're only going to cost you about $30. Um, and the nice thing too, though, is if you just stay with the sandstone gray, the sandstone actually gives you a little bit more grip, which for the most part is what you really need, especially if you're not a case person, because this is a big phone. I'm used to a Nexus 6, which is a 5.96 inch screen, and that is a lot bigger than this, but even though I am used to that size, I do find myself having to shimmy up and shimmy down with the OnePlus 2. Another few benefits that they've added to the OnePlus 2, fingerprint scanner. So the fingerprint scanner on this is really good. I wouldn't say it's the best that's out there because that's kind of what a lot of us said with the iPhone and then the Galaxy S6 when that came out. And, um, you know, and then things started to happen where it wasn't the best anymore after a few weeks of using it. But for the time that I've actually used this with my own personal fingerprints and whatnot, it is turned on almost... 99% of the time. There was one time where I had to replace my thumb or replace my other finger and then it turned on. But for the majority of the time, the fingerprint reader is very, very accurate. And we're in 2015 going to 2016. So we're, we're getting to the point where that technology isn't just Apple has the best technology. Other companies are doing very well with it. And so whoever OnePlus outsourced to do that, great job for that. And then the last thing in hardware upgrades, I would say, is this little toggle switch on the left side. Now what this allows you to do is it takes advantage of the lollipop features where you can go from your notifications of being always on, always off, or priority only. Now, truth be told, I don't really use the priority mode on too much, except maybe at night, so I, I can only get a phone call from my dad if it's a you know serious nature or my wife or something like that. But in a pinch, it's kind of nice that you don't have to turn your phone on to click to notifications off or priority mode. You can just do this even when it's in your pocket. And one of the last things I want to mention in upgrades to the hardware is the camera. The camera is still a 13 megapixel camera. And in this day and age, just megapixel alone, that seems a little low. But one thing that they did add was the fact that the lens construction, they actually have six lenses, and they've added OIS, which is Optical Image Stabilization. Now, as I've tested this amongst the Nexus 6 and the G4 from LG, 
I actually did a completely separate video which you can find right about here. So click on the little eye there to see that full video which I believe is about 12 minutes long and I go in depth of checking out the camera in low light, st standard everyday light and then macro mode and uh, other things like that. Now another really cool thing about the OnePlus 2 is the customization. This is using an overlay on top of the stock Android Lollipop 5.1 but the Oxygen OS which they call their version of Android is fairly close to stock as well. One thing is if there are any applications that the phone comes with that you don't like, you can remove them. You're not stuck to have that take up bits and bytes and whatnot and room on your hard drive. And whereas, you know, if you get a carrier phone, you might have that problem. Another thing when it comes to customization with the OnePlus 2 is you can decide whether you want to have the physical buttons for your back and task view button or if you want the on-screen buttons. But one thing that they really wanted to hone in on was customization of the UI. And so they added a few things that haven't even hit Android Basic. And they said that that would be available in Android M. So to a certain degree, OnePlus beat Google to the punch. Let me show you one example. If you swipe down on your notification shade and you have a list of all your little different toggle switches and whatnot, on Android L, Lollipop, and Android M currently, you cannot change the order of these toggle switches. You're stuck with Wi-Fi being first, Bluetooth being second, and so on and so on. But with the Oxygen OS, you actually have the ability to change what order you want these toggle switches to be in. You cannot omit them. They're going to always be on your, your, uh, your notification shade. But at least the order in which that they pop up, you can change that. Also, they have a dedicated section for customization in the settings menu. Under customization, you can actually go between light theme and dark theme very, very easily. And the thing about dark theme, what I like about it is that as you can see, well, it just makes everything dark and it's not so bright on your eyes. Plus, you have the ability to change your accent color. So if you wanted to, all of the little toggle switches and all the little icons, I can have them be red or any other color that they give me. And one final thing that I wouldn't necessarily call it a pro or a con because it's still a beta is Shelf. Now Shelf is an integration into the home screen wherein that they are testing a method of a launcher. So if you swipe right and you go to the leftmost home screen on your normal stock Android, that would be where Google Now is. But with the Oxygen OS, that gives you Shelf. And with Shelf, you have instant access to your frequently used applications as well as your frequently used contacts, or I guess frequently contacted contacts. Um, that's nothing new. We've seen a lot of different launches do that in the past, and some people like that, some people didn't. I mean, there are launchers out there that will change the order of the applications based off of your GPS location and things like that. But it's in beta, and OnePlus told me that they are listening very heavily to the outcry of users to say, hey, how can we make this better? Or, hey, no, no one really uses it, so don't even put that on the phone and use those resources towards something else. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cons with the OnePlus 2. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. There's no NFC, and there's no wireless charging. Let's first talk about NFC. Do you really need NFC? Now I have NFC on my G4, I've got it on my Nexus 6, I even have it on my Windows phone. The fact of the matter is the amount of times that me, a complete uber nerd, geek, whatever you want to call, my, uh, call me, I rarely use NFC. There's been certain times where I thought it was kind of cool that I could swap information by just touching backs with a friend, but then there were some issues. I had to take my case off of my phone or they didn't have NFC on and then became such a rigmarole of trying to just get their contact info that I just had them call me and I just took down their number that way. And then some other times where I want to use NFC for payment and we know that Android Pay is just around the corner and to omit NFC on what they consider to be a flagship model seems to be a little backward thinking. However, the fact of the matter is Android Pay 
and NFC payments as a whole is still growing. And even though there are a lot of phones out there that are obviously taking advantage of NFC, there's a lot more retailers that aren't. We know the battle between the NFC retailers like Google Wallet or Android Pay, I guess now, Apple Pay, and then there's Currency that uses their QR code, and then there's uh, Samsung Pay that takes advantage of the company they acquired, Loop Pay, which doesn't use NFC at all. So we're in this mobile payment war that probably won't ease out for another year or so. And we already know that OnePlus has already said their next phone will probably support NFC, which from a marketing standpoint wasn't really a good idea. But for the OnePlus 2 to not have NFC, I don't think it is a deal breaker. It's definitely a nice to have, but I wouldn't write it off completely. Wireless charging. Wireless charging is huge. And if you've been following our channel, I've done a couple of reviews of wireless charging docks and cradles and things like that, especially from Tilt. And I have grown to love wireless charging. Wherever I can find wireless charging, whether it's PMA or whatever the other uh, protocol is, I guess, Qi, whatever it is, I want to take advantage of that with my phone. And Samsung was smart to integrate both PMA and Qi charging into their S6, S6 Edge, and now the Note 5 and the S6 Edge Plus. But OnePlus decided not to. Here's the thing, though. OnePlus 2 has a 3300 milliamp hour battery. Now compare that to the latest news of the Galaxy Note 5, that is a 3000 milliamp battery and an octa-core processor and an extremely high resolution screen. If you take all those into account and compare that spec by spec to the OnePlus 2, yes, maybe the the quality of the specifications look better on paper to the Note 5, but this, the OnePlus 2, will probably last you a lot longer throughout the day. The next con with the OnePlus 2, I would have to say, has to be the USB connection. So the USB connection is USB Type-C, but hold up, it's not the new Type-C that Apple and Google are taking advantage of with their latest products, the MacBook, and the Chromebook Pixel 2. This is USB Type-C 2.0. So what that means is that with regards to fast charging, this doesn't have it. With regards to fast data transfer, this doesn't have it. But it does have a really cool charger. I mean, this is a really cool thing, and it sounds really silly and stupid. First off, the cable that it comes with is very, very premium. I'm very I'm liking this cable a lot. I mean, I, I can't wait for you know other phones and devices to take advantage of USB Type-C because you can definitely use this with that. And I'm gonna buy a bunch of these because this is really, really well made. And um, I mean, very similar to that of those people that are using Apple devices. It doesn't matter which way you plug it in, it's just gonna work. But if you're expecting to be able to charge your phone halfway within about 15 minutes, eh, we're not there yet. And that's a couple of things. And the main thing has to do with the Snapdragon 810 processor. So let's talk about that. The Snapdragon 810 processor, well, it is a 64-bit processor taking advantage of Lollipop, and it's great, right? Probably not. This is still the version 2.1, which they said that they don't have any overheating issues, and lo and behold, all the other companies that had heating issues were also using the uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 2.1 version. So we were under the impression that uh, OnePlus was working very closely with Qualcomm, which I'm sure they are. But the fact of the matter is the other day on the OnePlus 2, I was playing a brand new game called Fallout Shelter. And I'll do a review on that sometime later. But I was playing that game for maybe 15 minutes, just 15 minutes and just getting started as an overseer of my dwelling, if you will. And this particular area of the phone got really hot. I mean, not hot to the touch where I was about to drop it, but definitely hot. So let me put it to you this way. When you start your phone up for the first time and you download all of your apps from zero to all of your apps, 30 apps, 40 apps, or however many apps that you have, that's when the phone tends to get hot for the first time. And we're okay with that because it's doing a lot of things. It's updating, it's downloading, it's installing, we're, and we're, we're fine with that. But 
This was getting hot to that point and even more so just playing this particular game for about 15 minutes. Now you might argue that the quality of the game is really, really good in terms of its graphics output. And that's true. It is really good, which is why I want to do a review on it. But when I did this with Netflix and I was watching an episode of a show on Netflix on this phone and the conditions that I was doing it in was I was just sitting down over my couch over there. I wasn't holding it in any particular way. I wasn't holding it wrong. I was just watching Netflix like you do. And again, it started to get a little warm. Now, not as hot as it was when I was playing Fallout Shelter, but definitely hotter than I've ever felt when I was watching Netflix on my Nexus 6, my G4, or even my Lumia 830, which, you know, I don't know what that means to you exactly. But the fact of the matter is those guys didn't get hot. This one did. All right, so we've got a bunch of pros and a few cons. Um, I can't really tell you specifically if the cons can outweigh the pros or if the pros can outweigh the cons, but I will say this. The one thing that stuck out the most was it did overheat for me. Now again, this overheated when I was using it for media consumption with Netflix and playing a game that was arguably a little heavy-handed in the graphics, but still, it shouldn't do that after 15 minutes, at least not in my experience. So, would I give this a buy as of right now? I've only had it for three to four days, so give me a little bit more time. I just kind of want to keep you guys going with my journey with the OnePlus 2. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please like this video, subscribe, wherever that button is, and thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit, and take care. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.